All right, so we're here again, and we're looking at the May June 29, well, 2009 Agricultural Science paper. We just want to assist students with a quick exam prep as we move into our exams. So we're get, getting right into it. So question one, it says, Mary, sorry, many non-governmental organizations have been promoting food security. And we know food security is to ensure that food is available to all persons, um, good quality access to food through home gardening. Mary is interested in home gardening, but the soil around her home is rocky and unsuitable for growing crops. So right there in that statement, she's not able to basically cultivate in the soil around her home. And we're asked to recommend two methods Mary can use to grow vegetables at her home. Now, two methods. We can tell Mary to adopt what we call hydroponics. And that is basically growing her crops in a soilless medium. And so she can set up a nutrient flim technique or ebb and flow based on her preference and basically still have the ability of growing her crops without the use of soil. Um, she can also do what we call container gardening. Now container gardening is basically utilizing containers to do your vegetable production. And this will help in two ways. You can basically get recycled containers to place your soil in and then you go ahead and grow the the vegetable of your choice bear in mind certain modifications have to be made to ensure the health of your plants monitoring in terms of the nutrients and the watering part b says state one advantage for each method recommended in a now for hydroponics because of the concept of these applying nutrient um, in the solution, you are able to monitor the type of nutrients. You can give the plants the exact nutrients that they require. You have better control over the pH. And of course, it eliminates weeds. So that's an advantage. A matter of fact, if you're using the nutrient flim technique, you can basically have better use of the water. So water efficiency is a very good attribute to hydroponics. Now for the container gardening, it's very um, easy in the sense that you can get recycled um, plastic bottles or other containers. So the advantage where you reusing um, items that we would have considered as trash. Also, we can basically move our plants. So in case we have a drought, we can move the plants into an area where we can get water or shade, or even if we have a hurricane coming, we can better move those plants for little security. So that's it in terms of the question one. Question two speaks to marketing and rural infrastructure are two major constraints. When we speak about constraints, we are talking about problems. We are talking about challenges um, in agriculture in terms of the Caribbean region. It says name two other constraints to agriculture in the region. We know definitely predial larceny, the stealing of produce, and also animals from the farmer is a very a very popular problem that we're having farmers are not the ones reaping their crops they're not the ones obtaining the 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 the, the animals for slaughter and so they're basically losing losing their income we have other problems such as topography um, topography speaks to the slope of the land there's a challenge in utilizing machines and we know machines were created to make our work easier. So the farmers are not able to, to do the task efficiently. And it may cost much more to use um, manual labor. We have other problems such as extension service. In Jamaica, we have the RADA, 
the Rural Agricultural Development Authority. Sometimes we, we, we have these personnel, the extension officers, but they're not adequate enough to man all the areas. And so we might have farmers doing the incorrect thing out there. Um, we also have climate. Is either we are experiencing a drought or we have too much rain. Drought in the sense that the farmer will have to consider different methods of maybe purchasing water or finding alternative means to get water um, to his land. In the wet season, you know, you're exposed to flooding. We're exposed to um, pest and diseases. And you have to deal with um, soil erosion. Patsy is a vegetable farmer. And she is experiencing problem in getting workers to assist her on her farm. So just two ways in which Patsy can overcome this problem. Now, the thing about this, Patsy can invest in a machine, and the machine can basically carry out the tasks that the humans would have basically, you know, do. And so her problem could be solved by doing that. If she's not able to do that, then she can acquire um, family labor. She can ask friends or family to assist her to carry out the different agricultural tasks, um, planting, fertilizing, spraying. Farmer Patsy can also um, have better wages, have some form of incentive, and this will encourage, you know, maybe encourage persons to do the task. We know the, the, the impact of the attitude that affects agriculture. So farmer Patsy need to have some form of incentive along with better wages so, to attract these persons. Plants grow best on slightly acidic to neutral soils. A farmer tests his soil and the result indicated that it is acidic. What is the possible pH range of the farmer's acidic soil? Now, we know on the pH, pH scale, it ranges from 0 to 14. And as they said before, we, we have a, a, a neutral aspect as well, which is 7. Now, anything below 7 would have been considered acidic. So if you want to give a pH range, you can give one of those pH below. Now, identify one soil amendment the farmer can use to treat this problem. Now, to basically reduce or, you know, increase the pH or reduce acidity, we basically can add a basic or an alkaline substance, calcium carbonate, is one of those, or calcium hydroxide, and what this will do is to raise the pH. And briefly explain how the farmer would apply this soil amendment. Definitely, we can basically add this to the soil. And when we talk about adding the soil, we're gonna be referring to the following steps. Soil. And we want to plow, and we are going to be adding the lime in the powdered form, after which we can add some water, and that should basically stabilize the pH of your soil. Four speaks to figure one and figure two, showing a machinery and an equipment used on a farm. Now, if you pay close attention to this, no, if you pay figure close one, attention to you, this figure one, if you notice the the disc-like structures basically look like a gear. Now, when they're not solid in terms of a round structure, we know that they are considered in this form the harrow, and harrows are used for the breaking up of the soil, refining the soil. And then, of course, this is a handheld sprayer, right? So just two benefits to crop production when the machine in figure one is used. Now, in crop production, this will basically improve the 
plowing the soil overall improves aeration so it improves the oxygen content in the soil and it allows for root respiration um, plowing the soil again refining the soil using this uh, machine would allow for better seed to soil contact so you have better germination of your seedlings or your seeds sorry into seedlings when you plant them or sow them in the field also this will increase percolation the downward movement of water in the soil and so it improves drainage which is very critical if you have a, a clay type soil question five speaks to rations and we know rations for livestock basically ration refers to the food that we're giving to our livestock livestock refers to animals are manufactured to meet the animal requirements in our previous video, video we spoke about balance ration maintenance ration production ration it says state the enzyme responsible for breakdown of protein in the proventriculus once you talk about the proventriculus we are talking about the digestive system of a chicken so we know the pepsin the enzyme pepsin is responsible for the breaking down of protein into amino acids it says state one function of the rumen and we know rumen is one of the first compartments of the ruminant digestive tract. And what it does, it stores the food temporarily. And also you have the microorganisms such as bacteria and protozoa located there. And so they are able to assist with cellulose digestion. It's a large area, large sac. And so fermentation due to these microorganisms occur. Farmer uses grass silage supplements with wheat mindlings and molasses urea blocks to feed his animal. Name one animal which best utilizes the feed types used by the farmer. A goat, um, a cattle, any one of those ruminants, um, a sheep, would basically be your answer so just one reason why these feed um, meet the requirements of the type of animal named at sea no they meet the requirements because we know the grass and the wheat mindlings that's how they get the the the, the, the protein and the carbohydrates and of course these animals would be equipped with the digestive tract, the four compartments which will allow them to basically break down the nutrients and get it through digestion. Now in the Caribbean region, broilers, and we know broilers are basically birds that are grown for their meat, are reared in poultry pens where heat buildup can be a substantial um, um, during the midday hours. The figure three represents a typical poultry pen. Um, study the diagram and answer the question. So when we look at the diagram, we're, we're seeing the eave, we're seeing the slightly sloping roof, um, we're seeing the mesh, we're seeing the door. Um, so just one way of improving the design of the pen to reduce the buildup of heat. We want to get technical. We know the slope. We can improve this slope from slightly to more extreme, a more degree, a more sloping roof, a hip roof system. Um, that's one thing. We can extend the eave um, to basically be out further away from the, the wire mesh or the, the wall. We basically can even modify the door. The door is made up of board, so we can actually make it of mesh as well. And really and truly, we're going to be talking about part two, which says explain how they improve design. So starting with the door, definitely, if we make the door out of mesh, um, just as the same as the mesh that is around the poultry house, it would basically assist with better ventilation. Ventilation allows for air exchange of gases, and that will definitely keep your house cooler. 
um, to a little extent, the eave, the extension of the eave basically will assist with the direct sunlight impact into your poultry house. Also the slope. We know when you have the hip roof system, the, the heat, the hot air basically becomes less dense and it will actually rise. And by rising, it will basically go to the top of the house, allowing for the animals at the bottom to be a little bit free in terms of the heat there. And so it will be much cooler. It is generally accepted that housing for livestock should provide us a, um, a source, a, a secure environment for the animals. Identify two features in the typical poultry pen um, in figure three, which provides security for the boilers. Now, the low solid wall and security in terms of animals, you, you have those creatures, the mongoose that will basically dig under your, your, your poultry house if you're not careful. So that solid wall will basically allow for the prevention of the concept of predators to get into your house. Also the wire mesh as well will provide some form of um, prevention of predators. But the foot bath, oftentimes we think about predators, but we, the personnel entering into the poultry house, can basically take harmful substances, microorganisms. So the foot bath is there to basically deal with biosecurity as well, which minimizes us taking in any microorganism from our sole of our feet into the poultry house. All right. It says question seven. Um, bear in mind the more current papers will provide you with the space to basically you know write your answers. But then you would have required to have a booklet where you put your responses in. One record used by farmers in managing their business is a variable cost. Name the other type of cost which is incurred on a poultry farm. So the other type of cost would have been a fixed cost. And it says, define the cost you name in your answer A above and give one example of that cost on a poultry farm. Now, a fixed cost is a cost that doesn't change with the level of production. Usually, the depreciation of machines is a fixed cost. Insurance, um, anything in terms of the building um, is a cost, is a fixed cost. So those are the prime examples of a fixed cost. The manager's salary would be a fixed cost. Prepare a complete budget identifying two types of costs on a farm using the information provided in table one include total expense and expected profits in your answer show all working so you were given this projected expenditure and income on a poultry farm now one thing to note once you see something mentioned mentioning um sale sale will basically be your farm income so let's deal with it. Cost of building. Building is a fixed cost. Cost of waterers and feeders, that would have been a variable cost. Feed. Feed is a variable cost. They vary with the level of production. Medication as well, variable cost. Labor, variable cost. Electricity, variable cost. The meat sales would have account for your farm income. Depreciation, once mentioned, that is a fixed cost. Again, X sales will contribute to your farm income. Land is a variable cost. Beak trimmers, variable cost. And transportation is a variable cost. What I want you to do, because this preparation is aimed at you carrying out some of the tasks. So you're going to be creating your table. So I want you to pull 
you can replay the video, pull all the variable costs, place them in a table, and then you're going to get your total. Take all the fixed costs, place them in a table, and you're going to get your total. Of course, you're going to also add your gross income, so all those sales, and you're going to get a total. Now, Farmer Ben has been planting, well, you're supposed to work out your expense. So your total expense, so you're going to be adding your fixed and your variable costs, and that will give you your total costs. You will now subtract that total cost from your farm income to see your net profit. And from that, you can tell if the farmer is operating at a loss or at a profit. So you can do that and comment on the video below. What is the answer that you all got for your variable costs, your fixed costs, your farm income, and your net profit? Moving along, Farmer Ben has been planting lettuce on his plot of land for two years. He decides to grow sweet potato as part of his crop rotation. And we know crop rotation, basically we grow um, plants of different family. And this will basically maintain the fertility. It also disrupts the life cycle of pests and diseases. So it's very beneficial. When we add legumes into our crop rotation, they help to add nitrogen to the soil. So that also improves the fertility. So for each of the following activities listed below, suggest the changes he would have to make in his cultivation method. Now land preparation, the, the soil definitely for the sweet potato will need to be finely prepared so that the potato can have, it's not going to be affected by com compaction. So we want that soil to be refined. Also, if you use flatbeds for your lettuce, for your sweet potato, you want to use raised beds so that you can actually have those tubers, the root tubers growing properly. In terms of harvesting, definitely for lettuce, you use a sharp knife or a secator. For harvesting the sweet potato, you will need a digging implement, a cutlass, a fork, a hoe. For post-harvest handling, um, the sweet potato, unlike the lettuce, we know that we should handle with care. We still need to handle the sweet potato with care. But in terms of post-harvest, you would want to put the lettuce in a cooler to maintain that shelf life. The sweet potato, you can basically remove the soil and have it at room temperature. In terms of harvesting, also, you can think about the fact that you may use the crates for the sweet potato. Um, for lettuce, you basically will use something perforated bags to basically place the lettuce in. So the two parts. The sweet potato plant, which can be used for propagation, you know, that is basically creating a new plant, um, except for propagation without the use of seeds. The, we have what we call slips. So we have potato slips and the stem. We have the eye, we have the bud. Um, name one variety of sweet potato recommended for planting in the Caribbean. Familiar mainly with the ones that are grown here in Jamaica. We have the Carindon um, variety. We have the Blue Hall. Right? Just to name a, a, a few. We have the Six Weeks. Right? Those are some of the variety. We, we basically have the Plug Hall. We have the quarter million. Um, 
we have the six weeks, as I said before. I can't think of any other variety off the top of my head right now. Um, figure four and five represent equipment used in the honey extraction process. Uh, we know we get our honey from the honeybee, scientific name Apis mellifera. On the figure four, we have the smoker. Now, the smoker is used to mask the pheromone produced by the female, um, the queen. And this helps to keep the hive calm. Um, you know, in the wild, normally when the bees sense or see smoke, they think of a forest fire. And what they will do is run and eat up some of the honey, um, thinking about moving to another area because their home would be destroyed by fire. Now, with this being said, some bees will basically still adopt that principle. And what it does is to minimize the amount of sting because once they fill, their abdomen are not able to bend so much to basically sting the beekeeper. So we use that smoker to do the concept of masking the pheromone. Um, not all of the, the, the bees will basically eat up the honey. On the right, we have figure S, well, figure five, sorry. Um, um, that's due to the fact that I, you know, placed it in the Word document. Um, the honey extractor, which uses centrifugal force to remove the honey from the frames. And basically you have electrical or we have manual that will basically spin the frames and allow for the honey to basically be removed from the cells, after which it is trained and bottled accordingly and may be sold. Now, farmers usually examine feed labels um, from commercial rations. Again, the ration is what you're going to be fed, feeding to animals to ensure that the correct ration is bought. So state an appropriate feed for the old broilers. And again, you know, broilers are the chickens grown for meat. The old, we want to provide them with starter. And the reason for this is that the starter would be high in protein. And we know protein is needed for the body, even in a chicken, for growth and development. And we want that. Now, for this question, it says 100 birds, well, 100 chickens in pen A consume 550 kg. And if you notice this time, I'm not doing much in terms of putting down the information because I want you to work it out along um, later or during the video, you can pause each time I mention and take your jottings. We are doing our preparation. So, hopping back. Pen A. Now, Pen A consumed 550 kg of feed, while 200 chickens in Pen B consume 850 kg of feed. Both pens were fed the same type of feed and the birds weighed an average of 2.2 kg at the end of five weeks. So if you notice, we have 100 in spite in pen A and we have 200 chickens in pen B. Um, the feed consume was highlighted. Explain what is meant by feed conversion ratio. And this is basically a feed in terms of quantity of feed in terms of kg that the animal will need to gain a certain level of weight in kg now what you would recognize you would have to know the formula the formula for feed conversion ratio is the total feed consumed divided by the total weight gain so you can work out the feed conversion ratio for both pens. Bear in mind, the lower the ratio, the better it is. So say, for example, if you have a 2.5 to 1, what that it's saying is 2.5 kg of feed is needed to the animal to gain 1 kg of weight. Now, if you have another set of animals that would have given you 2.3, then 
it simply means the 2.3 would have been the better feed conver conversion ratio because it takes less feed. And as I said before in a previous video, the feed is one of the expense to the farmer. Very important that even boilers, you can account for the major expense to you growing a, a, a batch of birds. It's going to come from the feed. So if you can use less feed to gain a particular weight, then that's the best option. So what I want you to do is to work out the feed. There are two approaches you can take. And I want to just highlight, if it is that you have 550 kg of feed for 100 birds, you can basically determine what one bird would have eaten. Now you can just divide that 550 by 100, and we know we would have gotten 5.5. And the average weight would have been provided to us already, which is 2.2 so you can say 5.5 kg divided by 2.2 and that would give you your ratio using that very same example what if you wanted to put in terms of the weight for all the birds which means you're going to be multiplying that 2.2 on average by 100 so instead of dealing with the unit in terms of uh, the, the feed that each bird obtain, you can convert the weight of the 100 birds instead. So it's 100 times the 2.2 kg, which means it is 2.2 times 100, which means all the birds would have weighed 220. So it's 550 divided by 220. What I want you to do is to work out that of the 200 chickens using the similar principle. Comment below and tell me what is it you got and which batch or which pen had the better feed conversion ratio. There was an outbreak of bronchitis in one of the pens. Recommend two measures which farmer can adopt to minimize the effect of the disease on the performance of the birds. Now, if you have an outbreak, one of the things that you want to do is to try and control. And you can control by isolating the infected birds or treating the infected birds so that the disease is not spread to your healthy birds. The farmer can also provide antibiotics to the chickens and this will clear up the infection. It may vary based on severity of the disease, how long it will take, but the recommendation is to isolate birds um, maintain sanitation, the, the, the bronchitis, the pathogens are basically shed within the discharge from the animal. And so sanitation is very critical when dealing with and quarantine infected birds so as to minimize the spread. The extension officer suggested that the protein quality of the feed might vary between batches of feed and might have been responsible for the poor performance of the birds. Recommend two measures to overcome this problem. Now, one of the, the measures that we want to take to overcome this problem is to provide alternative um, source of protein to the chickens. So you can give them um, supplements that will basically provide them with additional nutrients um, that they would have lacked in the feed that they would have been given. Again, we want to speak to the supplements. I would say when you when you have low quality feed, it really affects the performance of your livestock. In this case, the chickens. Um, but overall, it affects reproduction. It affects growth rate. Their ability to 
withstand a particular disease. And so you really have to pay attention to this factor. Food protein and the fiber, all of those constituents in the feed is very critical. And so you want to ensure that you're getting your feed from a reliable source, a reputable source. So that is one of the, the, the measures that you can take when purchasing your feed. Ensure it is coming from somebody or a company that will maintain or a certain standard. And of course, as I said before, you would want to give them some form of supplement because that will help. And so we did the, this sort of brought us to the end of this paper, um, 2009. Again, thanks for watching. Um, comment, share, and subscribe as I prepare for the external exam, CSEC Agricultural Science. And we want to wish all our students the very best as they go and sit this exam this year. So again, please take your paper, go back through and ensure that you're able to answer these questions in its entirety.